test, test. Test, 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 test. Give me some volume. All right. We finna get ready to go online. Say again. Testing. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Okay. All right. You ready? All right, good morning, San Diego Mission of Baptist Church. Come on and give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for you joining in with us this morning. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. We've just been kind of fellowshipping with one another here. Amen. It took time for you to join in with us as we get ready to bring the word and break bread of life with you today. We thank God for all the many uh, friends and also the visitors that have come to be with us this morning. Just as wherever you are and wherever you're located in your home, uh, or you could be in your car, or wherever you may be, we thank God for allowing us, let you allowing us to come into your home, to come in and visit where you are to bring the bread of life to you. We thank God for you. We thank God for all those that's in the South. Amen. Uh, we thank you and clean and all those in Dallas and uh, Wiley, wherever you're located, we thank God for you. And then we thank God for those that's in Chicago. And you know who I'm talking to, my friend. Amen. We thank God for you. And then those that are in California, and you know who I'm talking to, too. So we thank God as well for you. And as those that's in the north. So we thank all of you from across the country joining in with us. On this Sunday, amen. It is truly a deed, a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I thank God for all of you. I ask that you pray for me. And the reason I ask for a special prayer for me is because I'm getting ready to go to Israel on the 5th of June. And I need all your prayers. Amen. amen. You know, I was just talking to Sister Butler, just letting her know, amen. You know how some people are afraid to go over there right now. Because they say things are unstable. Well, it's unstable here in the United States, too. Amen. And just what can happen over there can also happen here. But I understand, amen, how some folks say, well, I'm just going to stay at home and deal with what's going on here. But God has put in my heart and God has opened doors for me to visit the promised land. To walk where places he walked in and to be baptized in the Jordan. Amen. So I'm looking forward to it, amen, to going there to learn a little bit more about the Lord and to come back and bring some of that, those pictures and information back to you as if you were there actually being, really being there. So continue to pray for me. I need your prayers. I really do. Amen. Am I afraid? Listen, listen, most times when you do something out of the ordinary, and you, there's a little fear, but my fear is not unbelief. I trust the Lord. My trust is in him, and my, my whole life is in his hands. And whatever he decides, so be it. But this is the thing, that if whatever happens, I'm in the Lord. So just pray for me. I believe I'm coming back, but, but I'll just pray and hope that that's what the Lord has for me to go there and to come back. But I do love you, and I, I truly desire your prayer. So thank you. For the prayers that you pray. St. Elmo, we thank God for all of you today joining in with us. And as we get ready to turn over to our musician, amen, Pat and, and Pastor Ellerton, as we turn it over to them and, and Lil Gray, amen, to give us some songs, amen, as we get ready to break the bread of life. I have a word for you, amen, uh, and hopefully you are prepared for it. And I always say, since she's here, I always like to say, you better be ready for Jesus. When Jesus is ready for you. Come on and give God some praise.
Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all. I need, you. I need you. You need me. You need me. We're all apart. Yes. Stand, Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all. It is his will. I need you. I need you. You need me. You need me. We're all apart. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all. Do it again. I need you. And you need me. We're all apart. Stand with me. You can agree with me. We're all. It is his will. You. I pray for you. You pray for me. Pray for I, love I love you. I need you to survive. I, survive. I, won't, harm I won't harm you with words from my mouth. From my mouth. I love you. I, love I need you to. I, I pray for you. Pray for and you pray for me. I love you. I, love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you, won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you. Come on. Everybody say, I pray for you. I pray for you. you pray. I love. I need you. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need. I pray for you. You, you pray for me. Why? Because I love you. I need you to. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. Everybody, can y'all say that? I pray. Will you pray for me? I love you. I need you. I promise you, I'm not going to harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to. Oh, I pray. I pray for you. Yeah, you pray. I love you. I need you. I won't harm you. The word from my mouth. I love you. I need you. I pray, I pray. Hey, you pray for me. I need, I need you too. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you. Come on, come on. I pray for you. You 
you pray for me. I love you. I need you. I won't harm you. When it was, I need you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. Don't forget to pray for me. I love you. I need you. I need you. I need you. I won't harm you. We were from my mouth. I love you. I need you. Listen. It is his will. It is his will that a needy supply. Wait a minute. Do that again. It is his will. One more time. It is his will, God. The ebony. You are important. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Hallelujah. 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 I need you to survive. I need you to survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. I pray for you. I pray. You pray for me. My, I love you. I need you to. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to. I pray for you. You pray for me. Oh, I love you. I need you. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you. I pray for you. You pray for me, please. I love you. I need you to. I want to love you. With a word from my mouth. I love you. I need you. It is his will. It is his will. That every... Do that one more time. It, it, it will. You are. You are important. I'm found 
me say that one more time. Amen. Rain, rain. How sweet the sound that says a red It's amazing grace. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Gonna do it for the last time, amazing grace. Amen. Sing grace. How sweet the sound. Save a rest. It's hard to love people because you were blind. I was blind, and you could not, could not, not see. Not see. That person didn't speak to me, and I want to say something to you. You know what? You were so blind, so blind, and you cannot, and you cannot. Cannot see. Could not see. 
oh, 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 oh. But when Jesus came to your life, you were blind. Oh, we were but now. I look at somebody and say, I can see. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I once were blind. Oh. But now. I, I see. I used to be blind. But now I can see. Because I want my faith, not my sight no more. I was blind. But now. I see, I can lift up my hands and give God the praise. Why? I used to be blind. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. 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 I was blind. Yeah, yeah, ba. But now I can I see. see. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Oh, what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, you know, what our hearts have felt. Thank God that I can see. Thank God that I'm now found. Because truly I was blind, but now I can see. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We praise you. We lift you up and we magnify your name. Now let your word go forth with power, authority, and clarity. Such that spiritual, emotional, psychological, and physical and financial deliberation might take place in the lives of your people that they might know that they were blind but now they see that they were lost but now they are found in Jesus name now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in our sight oh Lord you are my strength and my redeemer and all of God's children said amen and amen and amen come on and give God some praise Thank you. We want to thank the choir. Amen. Come on and put your hands together and thank our choir. Thank together for Pat and Pastor Ellerton and Little Gray. Amen. For that, so those selections. Amen. Son, uh, to my son, uh, I told you, I need you and you need me. Hallelujah. We are all a part of God's family. That was for you. I thank God for all of you joining in and all of you that are here today. And I know you come looking for a word. And I hope you brought your Bible with you. Like a soldier going to war without his M16 and some of you women trying to cook in the kitchen without pots and pans. Hope you have your Bible with you. Let us stand for the reading of God's word. And if you don't have a Bible, look on with somebody. Now, if they don't want you to look on with them, then move. Just find somebody that will allow you to look on with them. I ask that you go with me to the book of St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. And we're going to start at the 25th through the 33rd verse. And then I want you to put your finger there. I put something there, and then we're going to go to Mark 6 and 52. Again, for your reading and for your hearing, Matthew, the 14th chapter, 
25 through 33. And then we're going to just cross over to the book of St. Mark 6 and 52. If you have found it, say amen. amen. If you're still looking, say wait. Seems like we all have it and hope you are watching or they're with us. So let us go first to Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 25th through the 33rd verse. And it reads, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. Look at your name and say, Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Look at your neighbor again and say, Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, Save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him saying of a truth, thy are the Son of God. Let us turn over to now Mark. You put your finger there. 56 and 52. Mark. You there say amen. amen. And it read, reads, for they considered not the miracles of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Let me read that one more time. For they consider not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart were hardened. Let me use for a thought. For those that's looking for a thought and for a subject, for those that like a subject, pass the test. You may be seated. Pass the test. Look at your neighbor and say, pass, pass the, the test. test. Now, on Sunday before last, I preached, it's only a test. And that came out of Mark, the fourth chapter, 35 through 41. In the text, I told you Jesus and his disciples were in a boat. Let me lay this foundation. When there arose a great storm or tempest with winds up to 63 miles per hour and an earthquake that was so great that it threatened to destroy the disciples in the ship. Now what the disciples didn't realize and what they didn't understand and what a lot of you don't see that it was only a test. Because while all hell was breaking loose in the ship and around the ship, the gospel records how our Lord Jesus responded. How did he respond? He slept. And how in the world can anybody sleep in the midst of of all that was going on in that ship. But Jesus slept. In other words, this great storm or great tempest, listen, 
did not affect Jesus at all. Even when the waves beat into the boat, filling the boat up to the point it was about ready to sink. You find that in Mark 4 and 37. I told you it wasn't a storm that affected and woke up Jesus, but the cry of his disciples who panicked and said unto him, Master, curse not that we perish. The storm didn't wake him up, but it was the cry of the disciples in in a panic mode that woke him up. And you'll find that in Mark 4 and 38. I'm going to teach you a little bit. In other words, they were looking for a way out. Look at your neighbor and say, they were looking for a way out. <laughs> However, in looking for a way out, they failed to pass the test. Let me say that again. They were looking for a way out. But in looking for a way out, they fail to pass the test. And whenever you fail a test, another test is coming. Yes, Preach Pastor Cabot, preach. When you fail one test, redo. Another test is coming. Now, nonetheless, when Jesus woke up, he says, peace be still. You find that in Mark 4 and 39. In other words, Jesus stops the test. Now let me use my sanctified mind. I can see Jesus stands up, tell the wind to stop blowing, tells the lightning to stop flashing, tells the thunder to stop roaring, tells the rain to stop pouring, tells the earth to stop quaking, and tells the waves to be still. Why? Because the disciples have failed the test. Now you're wondering, why would he do that? Therefore, there was no reason to continue the test when the disciples were not going to pass the test. Oh, let me help you. Jesus stopped the test to reevaluate the disciples' action in the test. Now, if, you know, if you've been in the army, they call it an after-action review. But since you're not in the army, if you've never been in the army, in other words, they stop everything that's going on, reevaluate what is taking place, and start to ask questions as to why we're failing this test. Preach, Pastor Captain. Look at the first question Jesus asked. Why are you so fearful? You'll find it in Mark 4 and 4. Why are you afraid of drowning when I'm right here in the boat with you? To you who are watching and listening, there is a natural fear under danger. Can I get a witness? There is a natural fear under danger. But there was unbelief in their fear. Because despite Jesus' tutoring, it still had not dawned on them that God's authority and power was present in Jesus. They still hadn't got it. And he had been teaching them all the way up to this point, And they still hadn't caught on and realized who he was. So therefore, they were failing the test. This is what meant by the second question. Do you still have no faith? Mark 4 and 40. It is worthy of notice how considerably the Lord defers. Watch this defers this rebuke till he had first removed the danger. He didn't rebuke them till after he stops all hell breaking loose. He stops the test. Why? I'm glad you asked. Because in the midst of it all that was going on, they would not have been able in the state they were in, to listen to anything Jesus had to say. With all that was going on, wind blowing, lightning flashing, thunder roaring, and Jesus trying to correct them or rebuke them, they still wouldn't have heard him. They was in panic mode. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody in a panic mode? 
Have you ever tried to get somebody's attention in a panic mode? They ain't listening. Not one thing you say, and when you try to get them to calm down, they may do something to you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Therefore, he had to stop this test. Another reason they failed the test is because after being with Jesus for some time now, they still didn't really understand and know who he really was. Look what they said when the test was over. After he stopped and the wind ceased and everything stopped and he stopped the test. Look what, look what, look what they said. What manner a man is this that even the winds and the waves obey right there and let you know they didn't know who he was. They still didn't identify who he was after he had already been with them, even up to this point. They still did not recognize that he was truly the son of God. They had miserably failed the test. Now let's look at our scripture today. And burn some light on it. But before we get deep into it, let me back up some scriptures. Matthew 14, 13, 21. I promise to come back forward. Well, when Jesus and the disciples were in a desert place, the disciples came to Jesus and told him that the time had now passed and that he should send this great multitude away so that they may go into the village to buy themselves some food. And now you done heard this for many, many times throughout many churches about the feeding that I'm getting ready to talk about. Now, isn't it amazing how this feeding of the 5,000 is in all the Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and even John. That it is recorded in all of them. Don't that should let you know that this is important. Because it is. However, Jesus tells them not to send them a what? Don't send them away now. But give them something to eat. The disciples tell him, all we have now, Lord, is five loaves and two fishes. Jesus tells them, bring it to me. Now, in doing so, Jesus now is getting ready to teach the disciples about who he really is. Now, see, at that point, see, they probably didn't have pills and paper back then, so they should have got their ears perked up and should have got ready to see this, what he is getting ready to do with only <laughs> five loaves of bread and two fishes. And we got a whole multitude of people standing out around. Now, Jesus commands the multitude, watch this, to sit down in groups of hundreds and fifty in some of the Gospels. Watch this, in the green grass. Look at your neighbor and say, in the green grass. In the green grass. In the green grass. Now, remember that now. Put that, put that in your filing cabinet in the green grass. According to Mark now, Mark lets us know that in 6, 39 and 40. He told him to sit down in the green grass. Listen, when Israel came out of Egypt, they came out fully armed. Now, in the Hebrew, the word armed means they came out in groups of hundreds and fifties. So somehow in the spiritual realm, groups of 150, the multiplication of five, which is the number of grace, sends fear down the ranks of darkness to its enemies. Oh, good God Almighty, you didn't get that, but you'll get it when you get home. It sends fear down there when they're in groups of hundreds and fifties, because that's what Jesus told them to get in, hundreds and fifties. Then Jesus takes the five loaves and two fish, looks up, watch this, he looks up to heaven, blessed it, and break and gave the loaves to the disciples. 
I told you, Jesus prayed short in public. Well, you didn't get that. And prayed long in private. Nowhere do you see Jesus in, in public praying long prayers. Lord, I'm finna get ready to raise last because I know you know God. You out here with me. Amen. Short. Sure. When he got in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed long. He prayed so long that the disciples even fell asleep. Yes, they did. And then he gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave the two fish and five loaves to the people. And they did eat, and afterward they took up 12 baskets full of fragments. Listen, and it was about 5,000 men, not including women and children that were fed. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going to get into this. I'm going somewhere. Now, after the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus sent the disciples into a boat. Did you hear what I said? He sends his disciples into a boat. Watch this. To go alone to the other side before him. Matthew 14 and 22. And I told you I would come back forward now. And when he had sent the mother to the way, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. Long. He went up there to pray. Watch this. This particular scripture lets us know the time we're living in right now. I told you I'm going to do some teaching. Because what's going on right now in the boat that's getting ready to happen in the boat, the same thing this world is going on right now. It's being tossed. And we're going to see that. Tossed by the winds, tossed by the waves, being tossed to and fro. And we're being tossed right now with every wind and doctrine going on right now. And all the stuff that's happening, pandemic and everything else that's going on right now, the church is going through it. No, we're not in tribulation. Get out of there. We're just only going through some growing pains for what is to come. Birth pains is what we're going through. No, we're not in tribulation. But in the midst of while the church is going through all of this, where was Jesus? Well, where is he now? He's perched, sitting next to the Father, doing what? Praying for you and me. He's praying for his church. But one day, listen, folks, dawn is coming. Because he's going to come walking on the water. He's coming. He's coming. Just like he saw them struggling. Just like he see the church right now going through all of this. But he's coming. But right now he's praying. And you know something? My prayer is, Lord, put me in that prayer. Put me in it. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening would come, he was there alone. Remember now, remember, the disciples failed the first test. You saw that in Mark 4, 35 through 41. When Jesus was with them in the midst of the storm, they failed it. Now we see Jesus sending them alone this time. He ain't with them. He sent him, he put him in another boat by themselves to go to the other side before him. Mark 14 and 23. So guess what's getting ready to happen? You're right. Test number two. You 
Failed the first one. Had to do a reevaluate and do some more teaching. Now here come what? Number text. Retake. Redo. And so what has happened is he did some more teaching. Remember now, hours before they got in the boat. By the feeding of what? The five thousand. Thus the ship was now in the midst now of the sea, just like it was before, tossed with the waves, for the winds was contrary. In other words, the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Do you hear me? In the midst of it. The wind was coming out of the east. They was going into the wind, and it was keeping them from what? Getting to the other side. Listen, watch this. Even the devil was probably helping try to keep him from getting to the other side. Don't you know that when we was in the military, we used the enemy or dressed the enemy up to look just like the enemy? To act like the enemy? To do strategies and tactics like the enemy? And we called them op four. For you that's listening that may not know what that is, in other words, they're using the enemy to help grow the friendly. Oh, preach, yes, sir. To help teach the friendly. To help them to understand how to fight and pass the test. Don't you know Satan is God's up for? The only difference is he's real. But God still controls him. And he can't do nothing to you except he gets God's permission. Preach, Cabot. But God will still use him to help make you, to help grow you, to help strengthen you, to help you better for the next test. So thus they was in the middle, tossed to and fro with every wind. And I told you another test was coming. Because now when Jesus sees them in trouble, he goes to them in the fourth watch, 3 to 6 a.m., the darkest time before dawn, walking on the water. He's walking out to them now. Watch this. And when they saw, look at your neighbor, when they saw, talking about their eyes, when they was looking physically, him walking on the sea, they were troubled and they cried out for fear. Well, they were failing the test again. Why? Three reasons. One, they were walking by sight and not by faith. Help me, Holy Ghost. You can find that in 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. The Bible says, for God had not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of sound mind. 2 Corinthians, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. I'll go in more into details later on in this scripture and later on in this message. Two, they were failing because they were allowing their minds to be tossed by every wind and wave of doctrine. Ephesians 4 and 14. Don't you know that wrong doctrine produces wrong believing and wrong believing produces wrong living. Preach Pastor Cabot, preach. You'll get that later on. Listen, when you have, whenever you have wrong emotions, is a clear sign you have wrong thinking. Because when you feel fear like the disciples, when you are worried, when you feel anxious, stop and, and ask yourself, am I passing the test? When you get to that point, ask yourself, am I passing the test? Because your thoughts are a result of your believing. Priest Pastor Cabot. When you believe right, you live right. And when you live right, you will pass the test. 
But when you believe wrong now, you will live wrong. And when you live wrong, you will fail the test. So whenever you feel fear, whenever you are worried, what are you thinking? What are you believing? Just remember, when you believe right according to God's word, did you hear what I said? According to God's word, you will live right, and when you live right, you will pass the test because it is his word that saved you. It's his word that keeps you. It's a light unto your feet and a lamp unto your path. Heaven and earth shall pass, but his word shall never pass. And it's his word that will help you to pass the test. It's his word. Will help you to pass the test. And just like in the army, we have manuals. That give us instruction. How to pass the test. And our instruction is God's word, the Holy Bible, that teaches us how to pass the test. Because if you ain't going through no test, get ready. A test is coming. If you ain't coming out of one, one is coming. If you ain't getting ready to go in one, get ready. A test is coming. So what is the third reason why they were failing the test? Because the fear they had was not because of the winds and the waves, but according, watch this, but according to Mark 6 and 52, we just read. Listen to me. Let me say it again because this is key. It wasn't because of the winds and the waves. Mark said, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. See, a lot of you, a lot of y'all been believing the only reason the reason they was fearful out there is because they was afraid of the winds and the waves and everything was going on. That ain't what the scripture says. And a lot of you used to believe that. But if you went on down and read a little bit further, it told you why. Because they didn't consider the loaves. Now watch this. Let me break it down for you. In other words, in the Greek, they did not put two and two together. That's what happened. They did not meditate on the miracle of the loaves or the miraculous power of God, for their hearts were hardened according to the Bible. And this just happened a few hours before this, before they got in the midst. They were flunking. And they were fearful because they did not consider what had just happened. I'll preach cabbage. And when your heart is hardened, you get fearful. Panic sets in. Self-preservation comes up. And it's all about me and mine trying to save yourself. And when this happens, you will not pass the test. Because it's all about you and not about him. And you can't do nothing without Christ. Watch this. These emotions are the results of fear, and fear is a result of a hard heart. I told you I would go into it in more detail. Watch this. The feeding of the 5,000 had just happened a few hours ago, and had they identified that it was the Lord Jesus rather than a spirit or a ghost, it should not have been a surprise to them that he was walking on water. Preach cabbage. Oh, see, let me help somebody. Because Mark says in 650, says they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. Listen, we should not be overly amazed when God does something miraculous. Why? Because he's God. Folks come to me all the time. Boy, this happened to me, and boy, I got out of this, and I don't know how I was able to get out. I don't know how I was able to get through. And you know what I say? I don't go, oh, man. I, I say, that was my father. 
I'm teaching somebody. Somebody come and tell me, boy, I was trapped in here, and boy, got in the car and had an accident, turned over five times, and, and, and got out with no scratches. That's God. Said nobody but Jesus was riding with you. Why should we be so amazed at what, what the impossible that God is able to do? Now, I can understand as a babe, yeah, but after a while, it ought to get to the point where you, every time, because God, I know, and somebody right now looking, and somebody right here now, God has already done something miraculous for you before you got up this morning. And I just say, thank you, Lord. Because that's what he does. That's who he is. They were failing the test because, one, they were not meditating on the power of God. And what the miracle was all about. And that is, you can have much as you want. That miracle, the 5,000, tells you you can have as much as you want. Because guess what? When they got through feeding them, they were full. And had leftovers. And, 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 and wait a minute now. And so that's what he's telling us right now. We can have much as we want. If we put our trust in him. Because he can take a little and make much. And I know a lot of you have gotten a little bit, but by the time you got through, you was able to feed many. That's what he was showing them. Watch this. And two, this is key. They did not consider Psalms 23. I told y'all I was going to come back with that. I can see the disciples. Well, but didn't he make us to sit down in green grass? That ain't that a promise he made? The Messiah written by David where he said he maketh me to lie down in green pasture? They didn't consider that. They didn't see it. They didn't see that this was who? At that time, the Messiah. Then straight away, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Hey, be of good cheer in that boat. It is I. Be not afraid. In the Hebrew, it's I am. <laughs> You know who that is, don't you? I am. Don't be afraid. I am all you need. Don't that sound familiar when he told Moses, I am that I am. Sent me unto you. Genesis 3 and 14. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thy, just bid me to what? Come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, what? Well, come. And when Peter come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He passed the test. Why? Because initially he had faith in Jesus and his word, and he said, what? Well, come. Matthew 15, 29. Watch this. And when you have faith in Jesus, you can move mountains. And nothing shall be impossible to you. Matthew 17 and 20. When you have faith in his word, all things are possible to them that believe. Mark 9 and 23. When you trust in him, the works that Jesus did, you too can do them also. John 14 and 12. And as a result, you will pass the test. But when Peter, took his eyes off of Jesus and saw, look at your neighbor, saw the wind boisterous, strong, mighty, and powerful. He was afraid and began 
to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Now watch this. He was right there. He had made it so close that he was just standing in arm's reach. Good God Almighty. He walks on water. And when he gets almost close to him, he starts looking around. And then he sinks, but he got right there. Don't get right there and then start doubting. I can see soon he get out of the boat and then he start walking a couple steps and he sink, but but he got right up close to him. And then he what? He sinks. And as a result, he failed the test. Now watch this. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand. I come to tell you, when you're in trouble, he's right there to stretch forth his hand. When you're going through, he's right there to reach out and give you a hand. When you've been down and out, he's right there to help raise you up with a hand stretched out. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've been dealing with, his hand is outstretched to help you. And he grabs Peter by the hand. And he picks him up and says, Oh, thou little faith, why did this, why did this you doubt? And then, I said, I was right here. And then John, according to John 6 and 21, watch this. They immediately, when he gets Peter up, they immediately receive him in the ship. Watch this. Have you ever said, Lord Jesus, I willingly receive you into my family? I re willingly receive you into my career? Now, somebody today is saying, well, he knows he's the Lord of your life, but he wants to know you want his involvement in all of the areas of your life. Let me say it again. He wants to know you want his involvement in all areas of your life. And the moment they received him in the ship, watch this, the moment they received him, what you think happened? The wind stopped. The wind stopped. The waves stopped moving. The wind stopped blowing. Thunder and lightning stopped. Everything ceased. According to John. And watch this. Matt and John says, immediately, once everything stopped, immediately. Remember, they were in the midst of the sea, right? They were in the middle, right? Watch this. And I'm almost done. Immediately they were in the ship. Watch what happens to the ship. If you go back and read John 6 and 21, it was on the land. Now they was in the middle of the sea. When he gets in, when they receive him in the boat. And they receive him. All of a sudden, the wind stops and the boat is on the land. Good God. Remember now, they were in the middle now of this sea. But now they're on land. You know what that means to me? Let me help you. That the Lord, that he is the Lord of space and time. Don't you know willingly receiving him and saying, Lord, have your way has the quality of timeliness and spacelessness. I know you'll get that when you get home. Don't miss this. And I'm almost done. Remember the first test he stopped? When he said, peace be still. Mark 4 and 39. So why did he stop it? I told you earlier because they failed it. And to confirm they failed it, look what they said. What manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? Mark 4 and 41. In other words, they still didn't really know who he was. Now, here come the conclusion. However, this time, we read again, the wind ceased, and they were immediately on the land. Why? I'm glad you asked. Because the test was over. Why? Because this time, 
toward the end, Jesus knew in their heart that they had passed the second test. But what you talking about? How? Because when they immediately received him in the ship and they were immediately at the land, the Bible says in Matthew 14 and 33, they that were in the ship came and worshiped him, saying of the truth, Thou are the Son of God. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the great I am. That's why they passed the test. They recognized who he really was. And that's all you have to do to pass the test is to recognize who he is. Have you seen these people, these, 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 this generation now? You better ask somebody. You better ask somebody. You better ask somebody. About who I am, that's what Jesus said. You better ask somebody who I am, what I'm able to do. Because I am the son of God, the son of the living God. There might be one here that have not been passing their test. But I come to tell you that if you put your trust and faith in him, if you put your whole life in his hand, Bible says all you have to do if you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior if you don't really know who he is all you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and the Bible says I shall be saved he that believeth and baptized shall be saved oh, where you come Lord, where have you at you to help me if you're in a backsliding condition, if you have fallen away from God, will you come? This is your opportunity to come right now. Wherever you're sitting, women, men, boy, or girl. Wherever you're at, wherever you're sitting. The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. We talked about that. About a hard heart. Don't be fearful. Put your trust in him. Put your trust in the one that can move mountains. Calm the seas. Raise the dead. Put your trust in him. Where have you at? His arms are stretched out. Will you come? I want you to help me. The Lord loves you today. While I'm praying, will you come? I want you to help me. Will you come? Oh, I'm praying. I want you to help me. Oh. has been recalled. We thank you for joining in with us. St. Elmo Mission at Baptist Church. We thank you for all those wherever you're at. In the north, in the south, in the east, in the west. We thank you for joining in as we get ready to sign off. We thank God for you. Now may, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit continue to rest with you and abide with you his now and forever. And all of us in here say amen. And amen. Till next time, St. Elmo. God bless you. you. Help me.